Hello there YouTube, Devin here again. Uh, today I have another boot review for you. And this is actually on a pair of boots. Um, I've ha I have probably six or seven pair of these. I have another pair uh, right here off camera. Oops, sorry about that, correct that there. Another pair right here off camera. I absolutely love these and they're pretty much gone now. You really can't find them, but it's a, uh, Excellent pair of boots. I wear them around quite often. Um, now I live in uh, I live in a big city, but I associate with a lot of like country people, and I really don't like the city. But the city's a lot cheaper to live in. So especially since I'm all alone here, uh, city's the way to go. But I'm not far from the country two, two, three miles max, maybe. Um, but what we have here is a pair uh, of jack boots, a couple pairs of them anyways, and these are Finnish uh, M34 jack boots. Now, these aren't actually the exact Model 34s. They're the same except for the sole pattern. So, um, but this pair, as you can see, is uh, had nothing done to it. This is my real beat-up pair. I don't polish them or anything. They last quite a long time. Uh, this pair also has the the softest uh, shaft of all like six pairs that I have so they're pretty easy to slip on under your under your pants you don't really have to worry about it because tucking your pants in these in public tends to draw some some eyes um, but I use these for reenacting too because these can be uh, used for pretty much any country that used a jack boot because they're all pretty much the same in the end but these are our finished made ones and this pair as you can see has seen some better days now the only difference between these and the actual model uh 34 world war ii pairs are the fact that they have rubber soles the original ones would have had leather soles it's the same thing and they're pretty easy to convert if you could find a pair and you're trying to do a world war ii pair you can take these to a cobbler and get the rubber soles peeled off and get leather soles put on for pretty cheap probably about 50 bucks um so nothing super hard to do there and i have a couple different sole patterns this pair um initially these pairs these post-war pairs that started to be made in the like uh 50s uh you can find them with all different kinds of heel patterns on them uh but they would have had just from from the heel all the way up to the toe here it would have had this type of stuff but as they wore out and began became smooth they would just stitch on a half sole up here on the front so this pair has seen some pretty hard use uh it's a size 41 there as you could see by the uh uh marking there uh that's just drawn on a sharpie they don't have that normally um but the difference between this pair too is it's also been converted after the the war because you can see that uh what this is the only part left of the heel channel and it's not even apparent on this uh side but this pair, uh, these boots were awesome because they had this heel cut in for quickly clamping into uh, skis and um, snowshoes. But it, uh, that little channel also helps you uh, take the boot off a lot easier. It helps you like dig it into something so you could pull it out because these are supposed to fit pretty snug. Now, the I wear a size 43 European um, and these are kind of large to accommodate winter socks and like foot wraps and stuff like that. So you usually want to go down a size to two sizes, depending on what size you actually wear. So it took a little while to kind of dial that in. Um, but once you do, it's, they're, they're really comfortable. They flex really well. Um, they bend really well, actually. So they're, they're a nice boot and they're really good for, uh, pretty much any terrain because the soles on them are pretty thick. They have double thick leather and then, uh, rubber, uh, whereas they would have normally had triple thick leather outsoles and then, of course, the big stacked leather heel. So these would have been pretty good. They don't have very good grip, actually, um, especially in the snow and environment and stuff like that. So um, they tend to slip a little easier, especially once the grip gets kind of worn down like these and it's pretty much smooth. So you got to watch out for that uh, on the ice. But other than that, they're awesome boots and you could use them in pretty much any terrain. They flex really well and they take a polish well and they look pretty stylish. Um, another way uh, you can distinguish the finished jack boots from uh, other jack boots uh, is they have this kind of wider, squarer toe. A lot of other jack boots tend to be pointier. Uh, they have this really wide, that's pretty typical of Scandinavian countries, Goodyear welt. So this, the sole sticks out pretty far from the actual boot. And 
the fact that there's this little rivet up here so you could lash your boots together if you're carrying them. You could put a string through them. Each pair, it's on the inside of the boot, usually towards the back seam. Uh, as you can see, there's the back seam, and it's only a couple inches away. You'll see this little rivet. Um, the sizes are usually stamped in them on these really, really tiny little tags there, as you can see, that's a 41. This tag is pretty much all but disintegrated. Um, but they're full leather too. A lot of the Russian ones you'll see will, ha will be tarpaulin or they'll be lined. These are unlined, as you can see, and uh, they're just a the thick leather. So, and uh, that little rivet is usually the way to spot a finished pair from, from other pairs. So we'll get that out of the way. The, the really worn and beat up pair, as you can see here, there's one pair that I, I haven't done anything to and one pair that I've given one layer of polish to. Uh, much nicer. So, uh, but overall, I'm really, really impressed with these boots, and you could find them. Now, this pair, as you can see, hasn't had uh, the half sole put on them. Uh, the heel is much nicer. So, the heel was replaced, but there was no half sole put on them before I got them. Uh, so, I'll have to get these things a half sole probably. Uh, but this pair is a lot nicer. It fits a little snugger around the ankle, which means this pair probably hasn't been worn as much as the other pair. And the shaft of the boot is much thicker. Uh, once again, you can see the little rivet there. This would be the left boot because the rivet should be on the inside. And uh, you can see the type of soles that these were given once again. So this one has the intact heel channel, as you see uh, this pair does. Um, but this pair has a much wider uh, welt on it, as you can see. It sticks out even farther than the last pair. Now that be, might just be because this pair wasn't worn as much. But they're awesome if you get a chance to get them. And these work for pretty much any impression of a Finnish soldier, which is one of the reenactment things I do uh, for World War II is Finland. And so these work as a great impression for both uh, World War I, World War II, and well into the Cold War. These, these boots were issued basically up until the 70s and 80s, and maybe even longer with some uh, reserve units and stuff like that. So, But it's an excellent pair of boots, and they're pretty easy to maintain and take care of. And uh, uh, there's pairs that lasted into the 70s that were built in the 40s and just kept getting new soles. I've seen a couple of those before, and they're they're awesome, awesome boots. So you really can't go wrong with uh, these jack boots or uh, sapogi, as they're known in Russian uh, and Finnish and stuff like that, or M34s or whatever you want to call them. You really can't go wrong with a good pair of jack boots, and they're quite stylish nowadays. Uh, they're making a comeback. This pair, as you can see, had a the, the right boot of this pair had a sole put on the toe because I'm guessing it started to peel back. Um, but when I go to replace, uh, put some half soles on these, it'll get, that'll probably get removed. So, um, but these are just a couple new pairs that I bought here. Uh, well, not new. They're pretty old and beat up. But a couple pairs that I bought that I thought you guys would, would like to see and everything like that because a lot of you guys seem to be pretty interested in, in Finland and uh, everything like that. So I thought I'd show you some cool stuff. Once again, these are in size 41, uh, just like the other pair. And But really, any jackboot will do. Uh, Finnish soldiers used captured uh, um, Russian uh, jackboots. They used um, German jackboots later after, you know, they turned on the Germans uh, to clear out Lapland and stuff like that. You would have seen them wearing German boots, and they would have been getting German boots and stuff like that supplied probably throughout the war in small batches. Uh, you could also wear Swedish boots uh, with these because uh, the Finns got a lot of aid from Sweden and everything. As far as helmets go, they would buy uh, from Sweden, their neighbor, because Sweden kind of thought... <laughs> Well, if Russia's attacking Finland, how long till we're next if they beat Finland? So Sweden kind of thought smart and gave the, uh, while neutral in World War II, Sweden was neutral in World War II, so they traded with both sides. Um, they gave a lot, a lot of aid to priority to, to Finland and to Germany in World War II, their closest neighbors. So you see a lot of uh, Swedish stuff, backpacks, rucksacks, boots, helmets, and stuff like that go to, to Finland in World War II, and it's not uncommon to see pictures of that. So hopefully you guys like this video and you subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Um, don't ask me where you can get a pair of these because they're almost non-existent in larger sizes. Uh, now uh, you can find them in very, very large sizes, like American size uh, 13 and 15 plus. Um, all the way uh, down to you can find them in like American size five and six, but that's about it. You really can't find any any sizes in between there. 
uh, very well. And if you do, you're usually going to pay for them. Uh, these pairs can be usually around 100 euros or like $110 per pair before shipping. So uh, nowadays, but if you can find them for cheaper than that and they're in good condition, by all means, jump on them. You really can't go wrong. So hopefully you guys like this video. You subscribe if you like the sort of thing. I'm going to try to turn out a couple videos tomorrow before I go on vacation because I'm not going to be in state. So that'll give you some guys to uh, work on and give me some questions to answer hopefully while I'm over on vacation. Uh, as always, uh, keep video uh, comments on topic to that video and um, do, do your best to make sure that uh, the questions make sense and everything like that before you send them to me uh, so I can understand what you're saying. And uh, as always, you know, comment, like, subscribe, uh, leave uh, user experiences if you have any of these in the comments so that people... Uh, can, uh, who are looking for a pair of information on these pairs are, are able to find that in the comments very easily. If you have any additional information I might have missed or any in information you know, um, other than opinion, all right? If you have like hard information, not, not opinion, put that in the comments as well if I missed anything and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.